Hello students and welcome to another calculus video. In this lesson, in lesson 4.3, we're going to be looking at the connections between F and F prime. So let's get started. So we're going to recap really, okay, what, what do we know about F prime and F of X? What are those connections? So, so if F prime of X is zero or it's undefined at some value, then remember that F of X uh, well, first, what we want to remember, these are called critical values or critical numbers, anything like that, critical points. Um, and so what we want to remember for f of x is that that is a potential relative max or min. And then as we start to move down this list, what we want to say is that uh, when f prime of x is greater than zero, then we know that the function is increasing. When it's less than zero, when it's negative, we know that the function is decreasing. When it changes from uh, increasing to decreasing, so when it's going from positive to negative, we know that we have a relative max there. And when uh, they're going in the opposite direction, in the opposite case, we have a relative minimum. And we've covered this before in uh, unit three. And I, I just want to bring that back and recap it because we're going to go deeper into that in these lessons here. So now we've already seen this with polynomial functions. So let's kind of uh, recap. Okay, what are we going to do here uh, where we want to do increasing, decreasing behavior? We want to say where is the relative max or where is the relative minimum? All right, so um, here we've got f of x. And what you want to start with is by finding that first derivative. So uh, let me find that. So f prime of x is going to be equal to 4x cubed minus 12x squared. What I want to do with this is find the zero. So I'm going to factor here. So I'm going to factor out 4x squared and I'm going to get x minus 3. Set that equal to zero. And I can see that the zeros are going to be x equals zero and x equals positive three. So we're going to set up your handy dandy sign chart. So I'm going to just do that over here in this space and um, let's say that we have zero here and three there. So let me pick a value that's less than zero, something like negative five, negative 100. Um, when I do that, well, when that gets squared, a negative value gets squared um, in, that, in that space right there, I'm looking at, okay, so um, I wanna get a positive times negative five minus three, that's still gonna stay negative. And so all of this is going to get multiplied together we're gonna get a negative value in between negative infinity and zero. And so now when I look at this between zero and three, I can see that, okay, I'm gonna get a positive number again because it's getting squared. And then let me do like one minus three or two minus three, something like that. And uh, that's still gonna end up with the negative. So I know again, positive times a negative, I'm going to get a negative value again. And now um, I'm gonna look at values greater than three. So values greater than three, uh, let's go with like 50. So 50 squared, I'm gonna get a positive value and then 50 minus three, that's still gonna stay positive. When I multiply those two positive numbers together, I will get a positive number. Now remember here that this is representing the signs of F prime, all right? And so we can say things about F because we know things about F prime. So what can we say here? Well, first we can say that f of x is increasing on three to infinity. We can say that because f prime of x is greater. So all the values um, between three and infinity, f prime of x is going to be greater than zero. And we can see that from our sign chart. So now we can say, okay, so f of x is decreasing on negative infinity to zero union zero to three. And we know this because F prime of X is less than zero on both of those intervals. You can see that it's less than zero on both of those intervals, but we do have to take out that zero point in that interval. So just remember to be clear about that. Well, what do we know about relative maximums or minimums in this case? Well, we have one changing sign. If you look at that sign chart up above there, we have one changing sign, and that is where um, we're going from negative to positive at x equals to three. So we're gonna think about, okay, if I'm going from decreasing to increasing, well, what's happening? 
that's going down to up. And so you got a point at the bottom, that's gonna be a relative minimum. So we're gonna say f of x has a relative minimum at x equals three because f prime of x changes from negative to positive. And remember, you can abbreviate that by saying something like um, negative to positive. Um, you can just use the signs and then like a slash, something like um, negative to positive, something like that. Now, along with that, I'm not gonna write it here, but it, maybe the question was asking, um, where is a relative maximum? And we would be able to say that we have no relative maximum. And the reason we'd be able to say that is because f prime of x never changes from positive to negative. And so we have that proof that we'd be able to say is that it's never happening. We have that proof from our sign chart above. Now, one thing that we haven't done very often is look at where uh, functions are not differentiable. So we're gonna take a look at where f of x is um, x plus two to two thirds plus one. We wanna talk about where is it increasing or decreasing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over here and I'm actually going to sketch a graph. So take out your graphing calculator, graph this real quick, and we're going to get this at negative two comma one, and it's just going to kind of go up in these directions, something like this. Now, of course, it's not going to be very perfect, um, and I'm not worried about perfection here when we're graphing that. But what I want to do is just kind of keep this in mind. It's like, okay, where are things decreasing? Where are things increasing here? And now I want to go into analyzing this using calculus like we've done. All right, so let's let's find f prime, bring that two thirds down, x plus two, subtract one, so I'm gonna get negative one third, uh, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So think about the chain rule, which comes out to be one, but we don't wanna forget that. And then the plus one, the derivative of a, a constant is always gonna be zero. So there we go. And I'm just gonna rewrite this real quick as two over three, x plus two to the positive one third in that denominator. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to zero. I wanna think about, okay, what's happening when this comes out to be zero? And right, there, we don't have any x values where it comes out to be zero, but we do have division by zero when x equals negative two. So if I have uh, negative two plus two, I get zero, cube root of zero, zero, zero times three, zero. So I get two over zero there, and that's undefined. So what we'll say is um, f prime of x is undefined at x equals negative two. And that's what we can still put in our sign chart, that negative two. And again, remember this is representing f prime. And so what I wanna think about from this is that division, what's happening from that division. So if I pick values less than negative two, well, I get a positive two in my numerator. Um, and let me do like negative five. So um, negative five plus two, the cube root of that times three, I'm still gonna get a negative in my denominator, which comes out to be all negative in the end. Now moving forward from that, if I get a, uh, I still have a positive in my numerator, let me choose a value like 10, that's greater than negative two, or you, of course you could always go with the standard zero. Um, and so I get zero plus two, cube root of that is gonna be positive, three times a positive number, I'm still gonna have a positive. Um, and so all of that, everything greater than negative two comes out to be positive. So we're gonna use that to analyze, right? We're gonna say the same things that we said in that last problem. We're gonna say, okay, so um, f of x is increasing. And we can see it increasing when on this interval. So on negative two to infinity, we can say that because f prime of x is greater than zero. And you can see that in that graph up above me is that as x is greater than negative two, so everything to the right of negative two, it is increasing. And so I read my graph from left to right, it is going up. So now here, um, we're gonna say that f of x is decreasing. Remember, abbreviations like this are totally fine. Um, and it's decreasing on negative infinity to negative two. And we know this because f prime of x is less than zero. You can see that happening, we're going down, it is going down, all right? So like the graph, as I read it from left to right, it's going down that entire time. And now uh, we're gonna talk about maximums or minimums, and again, we have the analysis from the sign chart, so I'm not even gonna look at the graph. I see the graph, but right, I'm not even gonna look at the graph. 
okay? Because I'm, I'm thinking about it from the sign chart here where we had the signs of F prime over its entire interval. So um, we know that we're going from decreasing to increasing from left to right, so decreasing to increasing, and I have a point at the bottom of that. So that means we're going to have um, F of X has a relative minimum at X equals negative two. And we know this because F prime of X changes from negative to positive. So it is changing from negative to positive. And since again, we don't have any positive to negative change, I'm not going to uh, make a notation of that here. So you do wanna keep that in mind as you're going through here. Um, maybe the question does ask you to state, okay, where are the relative maximums? And you would have to say that this function has no relative maximums and again, back it up by saying F prime does not ever change from positive to negative, hence no relative maximum. So you do want to keep that in mind again, what is the question asking you? Um, and maybe make a note of that here in your notes. So what we're going to do in our next video is we're going to come back and we're going to take a look at this problem and we're going to take a look at specifically what does the second derivative do in this case. So stay tuned for that. And of course, if you do need any help with anything from this video, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.